Good day, grade 11. Welcome to this next lesson in mathematics. In this lesson, we're going to work on some functions. We were already working on some functions. We we're going to go through some exam paper questions on functions. And then we're going to, after we've done those, if we finish all these, um, then we're going to move on to trigonometry and some trigonometry revision and some identities. So, Let's get carrying on. I was going to say let's get started, but we actually started yesterday here. It says, yeah, that there was a sketch below as a function of f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, okay, which was this graph here. Yeah. They said that the straight line, okay, so f of x was equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. The straight line of equation 3y plus x minus 5 intersects f at b, okay, and the points A minus 2, 0, and B are the X and okay, D is point. So the next thing they asked us to do is calculate the, using the, sorry, determine the equation of F. So we did, and it was minus X squared over 2 plus 3 over 2X plus 5. So now we know that that number there is 5, by the way. Now it says determine the coordinate points of the turning point F. The turning point here. So what you guys should know is that the x value of the x-axis, I mean axis of symmetry, is x is equal to minus b over 2a, okay, where b would be the coefficient of x and a is a coefficient of x squared. So that would be minus b, which is 3 over 2, divided by, and the coefficient of x squared is minus a half. So minus divided, minus, minus divided by minus the plus, which is great because we can see that this year is actually there, okay? And we'll talk about another way that you can find this value out in a minute. Okay, so therefore you've got minus three over two times, by, sorry, let's make it slow, minus times by, divided by, okay, we've said minus and minus and plus, divided by a half, which becomes 3 over 2 times by 2 over 1. These cancel and it equals 3. So therefore, the x value of this is 3, and now we can find the y value. Now, just for the record grade 11s, we could have done this another way. We know that this is a parabola and therefore it is symmetric about the axis symmetry, obviously. And we know that this point here is minus two and that point there is five. So we could have done, well, two plus five is seven. And therefore we could actually just move this up, okay? We could go halfway between them, okay? And you would have found the axis of symmetry. In other words, if we'd gone minus two plus one, one is three okay so the point is that we could have used the fact that these two are symmetrical about the axis symmetry to find the x value of the symmetry but that is dependent on the point that you got this value right okay so now let us work out the y value so now that we've got the x value is three we need to substitute three into this equation to get the y value. So we go y is equal to minus three squared over two plus three over two multiplied by three plus five. So we get minus nine over two plus three times three is nine over two plus five. Well, that can't be right. I think we've made a mistake here at grade 12, grade 11s. I think there's a mistake. I think there might be a mistake in this equation here. Okay, which means it might be a mistake over here. Let's start this equation over again. Okay, so let's do that. So let me just get back to here and go here and then just do this. No, not that that and go delete and then go from current slide and then I think the best thing would be if we started this again especially because I think a lot of you were missing yesterday from the lesson so we've got that function is f of x equal to a squared plus bx plus c and tell us that we've got a straight line 3y is equal to x minus 5 and it intersects at f so that means that we can this f at b so we can find this value so do you agree uh 
Okay, so do you agree that we could solve this? So we could go for that value. Do you agree that Y is going to be zero? So therefore we've got that Y is zero. If Y is zero over here, then X is going to be five. So that is five zero, that is correct. Okay, now we need and we know that that minus two zero. Now we need the formula for the equation of this graph, the R squared. So the way we do this is to use the fact that we've got two cuts. We've got y is equal to a x plus two x minus five. Okay, so we can multiply that out. It becomes a x squared um, plus two x minus 5x minus 10 which becomes a I'm going to leave it like this x squared minus 3x minus 10 and we can now use this point here and we can substitute it into this to find the value of a and a is going to give us uh, basically the, give us the shape of this graph, okay? So we know that now we've got three is going to be a, x is going to be minus one all squared, minus three times by minus one, minus 10. So that becomes three equals a, minus one squared is one, minus times a minus is a plus, that becomes plus 3 minus 10. So 1 plus 3 is 4 minus 10 is minus 6. So a is equal to minus a half. Perfectly correct. So now we have that y is equal to minus a half x squared minus 3x minus 10. When we multiply it across, it becomes minus a half x squared minus times minus is plus 3 over 2x and minus times minus is plus 5. So that is the equation for f. So it seems like we did everything correct. So maybe I just made a silly mistake today. Let's have a look. So from this, do you agree that we can say that we know that the turning point well, the way it cuts the y-axis is at 5, and it looks like it's a negative graph, so that is correct. Now they want to know the coordinates of the turning point. So like we said, we can say, oh, you know what? This was a negative yesterday's thing. I think that's the problem. Okay, so do you agree that the turning point is x is equal to minus b over 2a? So this is going to be not. So this is going to be minus 3 over 2, all divided by 2. Ah, that's what I did wrong. Over minus a half. There you go. I forgot to multiply by 2. There's my mistake. So therefore, this cancels with this, and the minus cancels that, and you're still left with 3 over 2, which is 1 and a half. So there you go. The x value here is 1 and a half. 1 and a half. Now we need to find the y value. What do we need to do? We need to substitute that 1, 3 over 2 back into the original equation to find the y value. So we're going to go y is equal to minus a half times by 3 over 2 squared plus 3 over 2 times by 3 over 2 plus 5 which is going to be minus a half times by 3 over 2 squared as 9 over 4 plus 9 over 4 plus 5 so this becomes minus 9 over 2 times 4 is 8 plus 9 over 4, plus 5, and okay, we can put this over a common denominator of 40. 8 goes into 45 times, 5 times 9 is 45, so that's minus 45. 4 goes into 40 10 times, that's plus 90, that's over 1, so 5 times 40 is 5, four, so that's 200 which is 200 plus 90 is 290 minus 45 is 245 over 40. And at this point, I will admit defeat and get out my calculator and go, what is 
what is 245 divided by 40? And I will get 49 over 8, which is 6, 1, 3. Um, or 6 and 1 eighth. So that would be 6 and 1 eighth. Okay, so now we know what the coordinates of the turning point are. Okay, now it says point E. Okay, point E is the point in the straight that DE is parallel to the y axis. Okay, so point E is a point on the line. Okay, fine. Let me just show you. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to stretch this line out. It says point E is the point on the straight line. So we need to continue the straight line out. Okay, let's just pretend. Okay, then they say there is a point on the straight line so that DE is parallel to the y-axis. So if I drew a line straight across here, okay, that there would be E and this would be parallel to the x-axis, okay? Then it's, oh no, parallel to the y-axis. Sorry, let's just erase that. Now let's try again. It says, there is a point, let's try again, there is a point on this graph so that D is parallel to the y-axis. Oh, okay, so there we go. So here's this point E. So that DE is parallel to the Y axis. And it says determine the length of DE. Okay, well if DE is parallel to the Y axis, what is the X value of this? Do you agree it is equidistant the whole way through? So if this here is minus one, what is this gonna be? It's gonna be minus one something. Okay, minus one something. So do you agree, all I really want to do is find the y value at that point, and then I will know what this length is, because I know that that's three up. So if I can find out how far down this is going, then we're sorted, okay? So let us do that now. So um, the way we're going to do this is we're going to substitute minus one into the equation for the straight line. So we got 3y is equal to minus 1 minus 5. So 3y is equal to minus 6. So y is equal to negative 2. So this value here is minus 2. So do you agree this length is negative 2? Well, the length is 2. And this length is 3. So the total length is going to be 5. Ta-da! Okay, not too tricky here. Now it says calculate the average gradient between B and D. The average gradient between B and D. Okay, so in other words, if I had to draw some random line between B and D, there and there, do you agree I could find the gradient? And we could easily do that because M is delta Y over delta X, and all we have to do is Y2 minus Y1 of x2 minus x1. So all we have to do is decide which one of these is going to be point 0.1 and point 0.2. It doesn't matter which one we do. So let's call this point 1 and this point 2. So the gradient is going to be y2, which is 0, minus y1, which is 3, all over x2, which is 5, minus x1, which is minus 1 which is minus 3 over 5 plus 1 is 6, which is minus a half. So the average gradient between B and D is negative a half. Now it says for which values of X is X multiplied by F of X greater than 0? Okay, it says for which values of X is F of X multiplied by F of X greater than 0? greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so what they're saying is x multiplied by f of x has to be greater than or equal to zero. In other words, they both have to be positive or they both have to be negative. Okay, 
So let's just erase some writing here so we can see what's going on. Okay, in fact, I'm just going to erase all the writing. We know that's five zero. So erase all ink. Okay, we know that this is five zero, right? Five zero. And we are talking about the, the parabola. Okay, and they want to know for which values of x, um, when you, which values of x will this both be negative or both be positive? Okay, so let's have a look. Okay, so do you agree that we want x to be either neg to be negative and f of x has to be negative or we want x to be positive and f of x to be positive. Okay, so do you agree at this point here, from year to year, there, f of x is positive, okay, and these are positive x values. So we know it works from year to year. We also know from here downwards, from there onwards, the f of x is negative and the x value is negative. So what is it going to be? It's going to be x has to be smaller than or equal to minus 2. Or it's going to be between year and year, right? But it includes it because it says it has to be greater than or equal to 0. So it's going to be x has to be smaller than or equal to 5 and greater than or equal to 0. Okay. Over here f of x, the y value of the graph is positive, but the x values are negative. And over here, the y values of the graph are negative, but the x values are positive. That's a nice question. That's a nice level four question. Okay, let's look at this question. It says in the diagram below, f of x is equal to negative x squared plus x plus 12, and g of x equals mx plus c. Okay, so we know that that cuts at 12. That's all we know so far. We know the function is minus x squared plus x plus 12, and we've got the g of x is going to mx plus c, so therefore we know that that is 12 already, because it's cutting at 12. Now it says determine the coordinates of c and d. Okay, so c we already know is 12. Awesome. Okay, now we want d. So do you agree that D we could get by factorizing this? Because if we factorize this, we find out where it cuts the x-axis. So let's do that. We're going to go f of x is equal to minus x squared plus x plus 12. And we're going to let it equal naught because we want to find out where it cuts the y-axis. So if we do that, what x squared plus x plus 12 is equal to 0, but we don't like the minus in the front, so it's going to be x squared. We're going to divide everything by minus. x squared minus x minus 12 equals 0. Now we need to factorize. So the factors of x squared are amazingly x and x, okay? Your factors of 12 are 12 and 1 and 4 and 3 and 6 and 2, okay? Now, what do we want? We want a difference of 1. So, obviously, it can't be 6 and 2 and 4, 12 and 1. It has to be 4 and 3. This sign tells you that they have to be different. So, 1's a plus and 1's a minus. And this one tells you that the bigger of the two numbers has to be the minus. So, it's x minus 4, x plus 3. Therefore, x equals 4 or x equals minus 3. So therefore, this value here is going to be minus 3, and this value here is going to be 4. But please note that ask for the coordinates of c. So the coordinates of c and d are c is going to be 0, 12, and d is going to be 4, 0. You cannot just write 12 and 4 next to d and c, because then you will get it wrong, because you haven't actually said what the coordinates are. Coordinates are both x and y values. Right, then it says determine the values of m and c and hence determine the equation of g. Okay, well, we already have c. Life is cool because g of x equals mx plus c. c is where it cuts the y-axis, which is 12. Yay, so we have that already. So we've got y is equal to mx plus 12. Okay, 
we have that this is 4. So what we could do is substitute this value of 4 naught into this equation, or we can use the 12 naught, 12, 4 naught to find the gradient. Either way is going to be correct, okay? I'm just going to substitute this value into here to get the m value, okay? So I'm going to say y0 is equal to m multiplied by 4 plus 12. So you've got minus 12 is equal to 4m. Divide both sides by 4 and you get m is equal to minus 3. Ta-da! So therefore, the equation g of x is equal to minus 3 x plus c. I think let me just show you how you could have got the gradient by using these two points and then that would be fine too. Let me just show you. So we're going to call this point 1 and this point 2. So you could say that m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So y2 would be 0 minus 12. x2 is 4 4 minus 0, which is minus 12 over 4, which is negative 3. So there you go. It doesn't matter which way you did this, you would have got the answer of negative 3. Okay, so now we've done this, and we've done this. Now it says if OB is a half, OB is a half, OB, okay. If OB is a half, then the x value of this is a half. Do you agree? Okay. We, yeah, x ray is a half. If OB is a half, find the length of AE. They want the length of AE. Okay, so although that seems quite complicated, it's not really, because if you think about it, what do we have? We've got the x value of B, that's a half, right? Because if OB is a half in length, then the x value of B has to be a half. But do you see that A, E, and B lie on the same line, okay? Which means that they all have the same X values. They all have the same X values. So that means that the X value at E is going to, no, not green. No, um, blue. The X value of E is going to be a half. And the x value at a is going to be a half. So if I want to know how long a is, all I have to do is find the y value at this point and the y value at this point and subtract the two and I'll have that length there. Okay, so let's do that. So first of all, we need to substitute the half into the equation for the parabola to find what the y value is here. So we want f of a half is going to be minus a half squared plus a half plus 12, which is minus a quarter plus a half plus 12, which becomes 12 and a quarter. So that point there is going to be 12. The y value is 12 and a quarter, right? Now let's find the y value over here by using the equation for the straight line, which is minus 3x plus 12. So we've got g of a half is minus 3 times by a half plus 12, which is going to be 12 minus 3 over 2, which is going to be 12 minus 1 and a half, which is 10 and a half. Okay, so that point there is 10 and a half. Okay, so then all we need to do now is find the difference between the two. So you're going to go 12 and a quarter minus 10 and a half is equal to what? And the easiest way to do this is just do a common denominator. 4 goes into 12. Okay, so it's a quarter. So it's 4 goes 1, it's over 1. So 4 twelves are 48, that's 49. Minus 2 goes into 4 twice. Okay, wait, so it's 10, that's 42, it's 40, 44. 42. So that is 7 over 4, which is 1 and 3 quarters. So the length of AE is 1 and 3 quarters. Okay, guys, you're welcome to use your calculators to do this. I just sometimes feel that 
we tend to use our calculators um, a little bit too much. And then we get to varsity and they expect you to do NBTs and they expect you to do sums like this, like this over here with our calculator and our brains have got so atrophied by not using a calculator that we can't do it anymore, which is a bit sad. So now it says, for which values of x is f of x decreasing? In other words, I want to know when is the gradient negative? When is this gradient negative? So let's go to the highlighter. Do you agree that f of x is decreasing, the gradient is negative from here forever onwards, okay? So therefore we can say that the values for which f of x are decreasing is going to be x is going to be smaller than a half for x is an element of real values because it carries on forever. I mean, sorry, x is bigger than a half. x is bigger than a half and it carries on forever. You cannot say equals because at the equals, the gradient of f of x is zero. So it has to be x is bigger than a half and it just carries on forever and ever and ever. Another way of doing this, you could have said that x has got to be smaller than infinity and greater than a half for x is an element of real numbers. Either way, it would have been perfect. Finally, they want us to work out the range of f. Now, remember the range is the y values for which this graph is valid. So therefore, it's going to be y has to be smaller than or equal to 12 and a quarter and greater than negative infinity because it carries on going that way forever and ever and ever. Okay, and then you have to always say y is an element of real values. Right, next question. Okay, grade 11, you might be thinking, well, why am I doing so many of these questions? Because grade 11, I find that with a lot of my students, they know how to do the questions independently. Like they'll know how to do parabolas, they'll know how to do hyperbolas, they'll know how to do exponential graphs. The minute you put them in conjunction with another graph, like a straight line or whatever, and then ask them to do interpretation of the graphs, especially in the exam situation, they freak, okay? So the best thing, the very best thing I can do is to go through as many exam paper type questions that you could possibly get and show you how to work through them so that you can realize that actually with practice is actually a very easy section okay and the same type of questions come up over and over again so this time we've got h of x is equal to a times by 2 to the x minus 1 plus q so actually this is quite tricky because what they've done is they've taken hyperbola, I mean, a an exponential graph and they've not only shifted it horizontally, they've shifted it vertically, and they've manipulated it with the A. So they've changed the amplitude, they've shifted it horizontally, and they've shifted it vertically somehow. But they do tell you that the line y equals minus 6 is an asymptote, which is very nice of them because then we know that q is minus 6. So we go a times by 2 to the x minus 1 minus 6. Okay, we already have the a value. Isn't that nice? I mean the q value. So the q value is minus 6. Then they say p is the y-intercept of h and t is the x-intercept. Thank you for sharing. Now it says, if the graph passes through the point minus one, minus five and a quarter, calculate the value of a. Okay, so now they've made life a little bit easier, even though this looked like a serious question, because they gave us this value here, we knew that that was minus six. Now they tell us that the value is minus one, minus five and a quarter work. For this. So if we sub this, substitute this in for x and this in for y, we should be able to get a. So let's do that. So we've got minus five and a quarter is equal to a is minus one times by two. No, I'm wrong. I want that to be a. I'm trying to find a. <sighs> Sorry. A times by two to the x is minus 1, minus 1, minus 6. So the first thing we do is take the minus 6 across. So I've got minus 5 and a quarter plus 6 is equal to a 
times by 2 to the negative 2. Okay, so let's bring this all over 4 to make it easy. Um, because this becomes 5 times 4 is 20, plus 1 is negative 21. And then 1 times 6 to 24 is plus 24 over 4 is equal to a times by 1 over 4. 2 to the negative 2 is a quarter. Okay, so therefore we've got 3 over 4 is equal to a over 4. So do you agree we can cancel that? And a is just 3. Ta-da! So therefore we can say a is 3. And our equation now is h of x is equal to 3 times 2 to the x minus 1 minus 6. Okay. Now it says calculate the average gradient between the x-intercept and the y-intercept of t. Okay, so we want the average gradient of the x-intercept and the y-intercept, which means what? Obviously, it means that we have to work out what the x-intercepts of um, the x and y axes are before we can actually work out the average gradient. So let us do that. So in order to get the x-intercept, I have to let y equal naught. So I'm going to go 0 is equal to 3 times 2 to the x minus 1 minus 6. So I take that across, I get 6 is equal to 3 times 2 to the x minus 1. So if I've got 2, 6 divided by 3 is 2. 2 is 2 to the x minus 1. You do know that this is a two power of 1. So now because I've got common bases, I can drop them and I can go 1 is equal to x minus 1. Therefore, x is equal to 2. Okay, so this value here is 2, 0. Now I need to find the p. And in order to find the p, I need to let x equal 0. So I've got y equals 3 times 2 to the 0 minus 1 minus 6. Okay, so it becomes 3, 2 to the negative 1 is a half over 2 minus 6. So that's 1 and a half minus 6, which is minus 4 and a half. So this point here is 0 minus 4 and a half. Okay, and now it's pretty easy to work out the gradient, do you agree? Because now we've just got two points. We've got that t is 2, 0, and we've got that p is 0, minus 1, half. So then finding the average gradient is super easy, super easy. We're going to say, okay, fine, let's do that. We can say m is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which is going to be, let's call this point 2 and this point 1. So we've got 0 minus minus 4.5 all over 2 minus 0. Minus times a minus a plus, so it's 4.5 over 2. Therefore, we've got 4.5 is the same as 9 over 2 divided by 2 is the same as 9 over 2 times by 2 over 1, cancel, cancel, equals 9. So the average gradient from P to T, average gradient from P to T is 9. Sure, okay, now, now, let's look at the last part of this question. It says, what does it say? Just a second, I just want to erase this to get out of the way. It says, determine the equation of P if P of X is equal to H of X minus 2 in the form P of X is equal to A 2 X minus 1 plus Q. Okay, so what they're saying is wherever we see an X, we now need to write X minus 2. That's all it is. Wherever we see an x, we need to write x minus 2. So h of x 
is going to be this 3 times by 2 to the x minus 1 minus 6. Now they say wherever we see an x, we need to write x minus 2. So p of x is going to be 3 times 2 to the x minus 2 minus 1 minus 6, which is 3 times by 2 x minus 2 minus 1 minus 6 which is 3 times 2 x minus 3 minus 6 and that is your p of x there you go right okay and i think this is the last question on our functions so if we can finish this and we definitely finish functions and then the next time i see you guys we will definitely be doing trig functions i mean trigonometry um, so let's try. It says the graph f of x is equal to x squared plus bx plus c. Okay. Straight down g or sketch below. Okay. A and b are points on um, these graphs. Okay. The intersections of them. Wait. A and b are points of intersection of f and g. Okay. Fair enough. A is also the turning point of f. The graph of f intersects x-axis at 3. Isn't it nice when they tell you numbers and you don't have it in the graph? And c, and the axis of symmetry of f is 1. So the x value of a is 1. The x value of a is 1. We don't know what the y value is, but it's definitely the x value is 1. There you go. Now, first of all, the next thing they say is write down the coordinates of c. Well, they tell us that this axis symmetry is at 1. So that means that this distance here is 2, which means this distance here must also be 2. So 1 minus 2 is minus 1. So the coordinates of C are going to be minus 1, 0. It looks like a 4. Just a second. There we go minus one zero okay so and remember again you need to write both the x and y value when they ask the coordinates now it says determine the equation of f in the form y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c okay so do you agree we've got two points okay we've got that we've got three zero and we've got minus one zero Okay, so therefore we can say y is equal to a x minus 3 x plus 1. Okay, and now what we can do is we can multiply this out. So we end up with a x squared minus 3x plus 1x is going to be minus 2x minus 3. Okay, which equals ax squared minus 2ax minus 3a. Now, last time I didn't multiply this out, and this time I am, and there's a reason. In this graph here, do you see that they told us, by just not putting an a in front of you, but just leaving it like this, we know that the gradient of this graph is 1, that a is 1 for this graph. In other words, this number here has to be 1. Okay, which means that we can multiply these by 1 as well. So therefore, we've got that the graph is going to be f of x is going to be x squared minus 2x minus 3. So that point there, by the way, is minus 3. Okay, so basically the reason I multiplied it out was because this year had given me the clue that that coefficient of x squared was 1, which means that a had to equal 1 as well. Right, now they want the range. They want the range of the parabola, which means we need to get the y value of this turning point. But that's pretty easy to do because all we need to do is substitute the value 1 into this and we'll get the y value. So f of 1 is going to be 1 minus 2 times 1 minus 3 which is 1 minus 5 is minus 4. So that value there is minus 4. So therefore the range can be y has to be greater than or equal to minus 4, 
for y is an element of real values. Okay, it wasn't so bad here. Now, they say that it's the end of the lesson. Right, okay, grade 11s, we will finish this. I promise you, the next time I see you, we will definitely finish this, and then we're going to start on trig. I hope you have a great day. Cheers.